part of you does not want success. You don't want to move up. Everyone thinks like, man, I just want to make billions and have this company and all these people working for me. If that happened, you would freak the fuck out. You'd be like, man, all the responsibility. Oh my God, all the extra headaches. Now people are texting me for this. I got to deal with that. You'd freak out. I saw this for years, even in Success With Women, where everyone's like, I really want a beautiful girl. I want a beautiful girlfriend. Go say hi. And you think their rejection is scary? Like, hello, no thank you. You think that's bad? You know what's scarier? Hi, hey. <gasps> she reacted well, she smiled. Now what? And they freak out. They freak out and either bounce like, oh, and gone. Or they freak out and they do some completely uncalibrated thing. Like, oh, they're like, gone. The girl's like, what the fuck? They just can't let it land. So there's a force within you that is consciously trying to make success happen. But then there's also an unconscious force that's much more powerful where you're simultaneously pushing it away. And that's the whole driving with the brakes on. Please push away. Please push away. And what do we all focus on? Well, I just got to make it happen even more without realizing that the dynamic of pushing away is still there. And we all have this ceiling. You know, things may change in the physical world, but if you look at the patterns, it's always the same patterns at play. Your life is this constant repeat. You know, even with money, my favorite example is like, you know, you think money will make you happy? Now, as I joked about before, it actually will, because now you can afford transformation mastery. <laughs> but apart from that, it's all about us, guys. It's all about us. <laughs> apart from that, it's what? Just more resources to numb yourself. That's really it. Instead of numbing yourself, getting lost into some game on a PS4, you can now travel the world and go on a yacht with models. But guess what? You're still numbing yourself. You're still trying to escape yourself. Underneath the surface, it's the same dynamic at play. And in reality, it's worse. Because guess what? If you're at the bottom with your PS4 playing some GTA or Red Dead Redemption. How do you know what that is? I love that you know what that is. I see the posters okay. everywhere. You'll see every fucking street. Red Dead Redemption. It actually looks pretty fucking I sick. Um, <laughs> I've played a video game in years. I once watched Red Dead Redemption. Video games. I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean, think about it. If you're playing your fucking little Red Dead thing, it's easy to rationalize, well, I'm not really happy. Yeah, I'm escaping myself, but hey, I'm at the Red Dead level, right? You know, there's so much more I'm missing. If I was on the yacht, everything would be different. But if you're the person who's on the yacht, surrounded by all the models, and you're still feeling that same shittiness under it all, God damn, does that fuck with you? That is hell. That's when you're like, wow, if this doesn't work, what if nothing works? And this is where you start freaking the fuck out. There's that saying, and I'm paraphrasing, the road to enlightenment is paved with disillusionment. The more you realize it didn't work, it didn't work, it didn't work, and didn't work until you're, you've tried everything, and you're like, well, last resort, Face those internal demons. Do the inner work part of you knows you should have been doing from the start. And once more, with this whole work ethic or work magnet, identify the part of you that's pushing it away. It's asking yourself those uncomfortable questions. Why don't I deserve success? And once more, I'm not saying you don't. I'm saying ask the part of you that believes that. There's a part of you inside. Like, you know what? You don't deserve success because you're short. It could make no sense, but if a part of you believes that until you address it, you're going to keep pushing it away to stay congruent to that. What if nothing changed since your childhood? You think it did, but did it? How often are you repeating the same patterns, the same relationships, the same dynamics? More often than not, you project even your father and your mother on different people. They take on the father figure, the mother figure, and they trigger you the exact same way. No? The same friendships. If you were someone as a kid who was extremely isolated, you think you move and you grow up and you make more money and now it's all different. No, you find your way back to that position. If you're the class clown, you find your way back to that position. You can move around the world. Maybe in this country it'll be different with these people. And you can delay it using hustle and discipline and putting on a certain front, but eventually you find a way back to what you know. The same with what you believe you deserve. I only deserve this, the rest I'm not worthy. That is formed during your childhood. You take on this identity, you take on these ceilings of success when it comes to your health, your wealth, your relationships, and then you let this run you. And we just chase the physical, rearranging our circumstances 
but it's the same dynamics if you look beneath the surface. You're replaying the same fucking script over and over and over again. That's what you have to address. Don't fall for the illusion that things are going to change externally. It's the same shit underneath it all. Remember, wherever you go, there you are. It goes like this. Regular life. Something bad happens. Oh! Something bad happens. Oh! Something good happens. Oh, awesome. Oh! Oh, mm -hmm. cool, cool, cool. Hey, yep. Oh, cool. This uh, forgot about that. Oh, lost that thing that was cool. I lost the thing that was cool. How often has your positive response ever been proportional to your negative responses? <laughs> Everyone's like, eh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. right now. If you waited to be at this event to meet Julie and I, and maybe I mean I don't think everybody in the world feels this way, but if you're here in this audience, I would hope that you're excited about it. Now think of how pissed off you get from the things that bother you when you're triggered. But right now, let's, say that, let, let's just say in theory, we'll just give us this, that you were really excited to be here for this. Right now, are you just like, oh, oh, oh. it's not proportional. Part of why you get so upset is that you think delusionally that if, that if you were at that thing that you're looking forward to, that it'd be so great. So then when you, uh, you go down so hard because you, you envision this like super awesome external reality that it could have provided for you. So when you move away from that super awesome reality, you get upset, not realizing that the super awesome reality would not have even been that much better and that the happiness is something you have to generate within yourself. Mm. Yeah, another dynamic I love with self-sabotage is this. What do most people do? <laughs> they have the illusion that they're going up. But if you actually look at the different patterns, you're staying below the ceiling, you're going up until you hit that ceiling, and you're like, not worthy. Fuck shit up, self-sabotage. Fall down, spend your time fixing it. Not worthy. Fuck shit up. And you just stay beneath that line. The same patterns, Groundhog's Day. If I look at my life, I definitely, and I think all of us could relate with this, I definitely went through those kind of loops where I thought that happiness was found externally. Happiness was found externally. Happiness was found externally. And I tried that through meeting women, through making money, through going on vacations, and so on and so forth. I mean, I've, you know, I've had experiences where you know, I did my first launch of a program called the Blueprint Decoded, and it, it sold at $2 million, you know, I'm in my mid-20s. Or I had, um, I remember after that, I went on a uh, six-week vacation to Mexico, and I just stayed in like little castles and things like that. I could talk, I could talk for hours about what that did to me psychologically. Um, yeah, because Mexico is actually amazing, by the way. Like most people don't know this, it's like stunning. Most people think Europe's the only setting place. So you go to like, you go to um, Oaxaca City and Puebla and Guadalajara. Like there's all these places most people have never heard of. It's incredible. Um, Sayulito is awesome. <laughs> anyway, okay. Off my, okay, I'm, in, I'm back. <laughs> so, ba okay, but basically like what that did to me or things like, um, you know, being able to eat at a five-star dinner every night or have a partner who you have intimacy with who's very attractive and live in the place you want to live, right? This is all things that we think will make us happy. Um, I had the experience of really hammering myself, mostly because I was so miserable. So feeding off of that misery, hammering myself to put myself in positions to do those things. Now, I love that because I can teach people how to do that. I think there's a space for that. I want to live a great life. I want to show you, and Julian wants to show you how to live a great life. So it's not either or. I don't like the either or. I think that's really messed up. It should be both. They should be synergistic. But I definitely had the experience where without doing any work on myself internally, I'm just furiously running towards these external objects, right? These external things that I think will help me. And it was weird living in Hawaii. I've mentioned this in some other videos, but I, uh, I, it's weird being in Hawaii, living in an oceanfront apartment with a girlfriend who has like perfect body, you know, screwing my brains out every day. No condoms, um, you know, um, girlfriend, okay, uh, you know, um, eating, you know, I, at that time I'm living in Hawaii, I'm eating at like Alan Wong's and La Mer and all these baller freaking restaurants, like some of the best in the world, so tasty, and um, Sasabune, okay, good stuff, and like literally still being fucking miserable. I remember bodyboarding in, I'm in front of my apartment on the ocean, bodyboarding in and being like, you know, all those feelings of depression and misery that I felt my entire life have not really changed. I'm like, I'm, in, I'm like, this is cool. Like, I'm on a wave. But that lack of, what, call it lack of serotonin or lack of dopamine in my brain is still there. What is your relationship to the present moment?
Mm. Say, what is my relationship with the present moment? Am I friendly with the present moment? So your degree of friendliness with the present moment is going to dictate your ability to get that big win and even enjoy it at all. To enjoy that incredible new partner or intimacy with some attractive partner. You think that you're going to find happiness by getting these certain things. It helps, don't get me wrong, but often the work that you have to put in and the effort and, and how much you have to draw out of yourself will create so much chaos, like you know, notorious B.I.G., more money, more problem. I'm trying to say that like how he said it. More money, more problems. So, <laughs> why well, try? So, so what you have is like, just be aware, you have to cultivate your friendliness with the present moment. Now, part of that, if you've read Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, incredible book, I actually even prefer the sequel, A New Earth, incredible book, but you read the first one to understand the second one better. These are, you know, and he, and he draws that from Buddhism and Eastern philosophy. You don't need to be a Buddhist or someone into Eastern philosophy to gather the lessons from that, right? There's uh, Harvard teachers that have done tests on how meditation affects happiness. They just do it from a scientific standpoint. Don't get caught up in the, the, the metaphysical aspect. I think that stuff's really cool, but don't let it be a barrier if you're having trouble with it. The main thing to take is what is your relationship to the present moment? And on one level, Eckhart Tolle would say, you know, be present, right? Well, that's, again, he's probably my favorite speaker and author. But that being said, it's like saying your house is on fire. Okay, your house is on fire. And when you put out the fire, you will love life, right? And you're like, got it, Eckhart. And then you're like, okay, so how do I put the fucking house out, right? And, and, and I think he does talk about it, and, and he has a lot of what he says about it. And I love that, and that's why he'll always be like, Eckhart to me is, is just a living legend and, and I would probably cry like a girl at a NSYNC concert if I hung out with him. But the point being is like what Julian is showing you here is he's showing you a lot of ideas on how to let go, okay? He's showing you, wait a minute, there's a lot of negativity and trauma. You're stuffing it, running from it, medicating it, doing anything to get away from it and that is burning up huge amounts of energy. Then you somehow power through that and go make money or meet a cool partner or whatever the heck it is, and you think it's gonna work, doesn't work, actually adds more complexities, makes you more miserable. And so what he's showing you how to do here is instead let go of a lot of that heavy negative energy. Just take chunks out of it and wake up. And then when you've woken up, you ironically, you're like a car that has more power to go to your goals anyway. And you begin to resonate with better situations for you rather than going after something that resonated with your negativity, resonated with your trauma, picking jobs or businesses or friends or relationships or lifestyles that stimulate your trauma energy and then furiously going to that, a lot of the time when you let this stuff go, did anybody here have an experience today where, and it's maybe just one or two people could be all, I don't know, it just depends on the crowd. Did anybody here have an experience today where you feel like you woke up and realized that a lot of things in your lifestyle now, you couldn't go back to? Did anybody here have a, a feeling like that? Okay, it's quite intense, isn't it? It's pretty crazy. I had that experience as well with this, where I was like, what am I doing? Like, do I even want to do this anymore? I had to, and I had to, I still kept with what I'm doing, but I reprioritized and realigned and put my focus into things that if I got, you know, hit by a car on the way out of here, I'm just lying there, think I'm gonna die. I'd be like, you know what? I like what I did this year. This was good. As opposed to, by the way, the first time I ever got hit by a car and thought I was gonna die <laughs> many years ago. And I was like, that was bad. So, you know, so that was a very eye-opening thing. Okay, it's about getting, it's about, enjoying life, getting results faster, and getting the right result, okay? You're digging down a cave. If you're digging down some cave and you realize it's the wrong cave, you, you don't just get to go this way, right? You gotta go all the way back up. You gotta walk back now, <laughs> take a break, and then go down the new cave. So we wanna kinda pull you out of any cave. That's, if it's not the right cave for you, we wanna, show, we wanna make you aware of that and tune to that, and then get you going down a cave that works for you. Yeah, that's what's funny with the, the whole hustle or like discipline, work ethic. It's like, one, you're never really happy because you're using misery as your main drive. And two, when you get the results, you don't even enjoy those results. If you're not enjoying your results, those are not results. On top of that, do an audit on your life. Like, how much of your life are you spending working? Just actually look at it. Like, write it down every day. Like, okay, I work Monday to Friday from this time to this time. Boom. How much is that in a month, a year? How many years of your life are you working? And then you're like, holy shit, that's most of my life just spent in misery. There's no reason for you to not feel fucking amazing right now. Like, there's no reason at all. In this moment, right here, right now, sitting here in this room, 
You're all alive. You're all here in this room. No one's cutting your fucking arm. So why is that relationship to the now kind of, eh? Okay. Now you hear, be present. And it's a great first approach, but you know what's better? Identify everything that's pulling you away from presence and let go of it. So by default, you realize presence. You can't pursue presence. You can only attract presence. And that's by focusing on all the uncomfortable shit. But then also look at how even this process of, say, letting go can be used as a way to resist the right here, right now and get on that destination thinking, get hooked on that even more. Like someday, someday, how? Someday I'll have all the money and I'll finally be happy. Someday when I will have let go completely, I'll be happy. Someday when I will have, you know, healed all my trauma, I will be complete and then things will be different in the future. What did we say at the beginning of today? It's not about the future. It's not about going from here to up there. Okay. On one hand, it's endless because you're just telling yourself and addicting yourself to in the future, in the future, in the future. And not just that, but then it's endless because you're assuming that right here, right now, you're incomplete. You can only realize it. It's more so what is, say this is presence, what am I hanging on to that's pulling me away from it? What's pulling me away from feeling amazing right now? You have to realize you've already passed the finish line. Stop projecting it in the future. This is why you hear those um, cheesy sayings when people ask like, when will I have let go completely? When you stop asking the question. And you just hate that. You're like, God damn it, that's fine. Like you can't really say anything. You're just like, whatever. But why do people say that, including myself? Because the more you let go, the less resistance there is to being you, the less resistance there is to being you right here, right now. And what's that question? When will I have let go completely? It's once more that destination thinking. When will I have made it? Trying to escape where you are now, hating and resisting where you are now. If you feel okay with where you are now, there's no longer that need to escape and that question doesn't arise anymore. So it's identifying what's in the way. What's all this bullshit? Can I let go of it? Asking yourself or that part of you, why don't I deserve to be happy right now? Why? Why don't I deserve success? Why do I deserve to be punished? Why does my life have to be hard? Why do I deserve to suffer? Ask yourself, write it down, identify it, and then once more, let go of it. The same with the movie character, let go of it. And don't fall into the trap either of thinking that you need some crazy event to realize this. You know, he was talking about Hawaii, Eckhart Tolle's like, oh, I was sitting on a bench for like two years. You don't have to sit on a fucking bench. You don't have to like be crying on your little board in the water in Hawaii. Uh, the same with, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how I visualize it. It's like you just like, <laughs> just like paddling in tears. No, but it was the same for me. You might've heard me talk about this. Like right before that, that scandal I went through, like I was going all out. I thought like, oh, you know, once, like this is how it started for real. It's like, as soon as I found out about, say, dating, success with women, I was like, you know what? If I could just get a girl to react well to me in front of my friends, I never have to see her again. I don't need it. I just need her to smile or laugh at something I said. That was my one goal in, in success with women. Say that little joke. Make sure they see it. Walk away. Go back to them. Have them ask me, whoa, what did you do? What did you say? And answer, just be cool. <laughs> that was it. Is if I got that, I'd be like, my life is complete. And it's funny how we project that. My life is complete. My finances will be complete forever. No worries in the world if I could just experience that. And I did. And you get the little high, but then what happens? I need more. Now what? You're back to, you know, who you are. Wherever you go, there you are. So I'm like, okay, well, I need more now. Maybe if I get a phone number. And then you get a phone number and you're like, okay, nothing. Maybe a kiss. Maybe a date. Maybe intimate relationships, it didn't work. Maybe more women, more women. Maybe more beautiful women by society standards, didn't work. Okay, maybe it's not just the women and validation from women. What about talking about this in front of crowds of hundreds and not just get the validation from women or telling your friends about it, but then having people pay you and listen to you talk about it and cheer you on and travel the world talking about it, have more money you can spend, visit everywhere, have girlfriends everywhere. It was from my perspective at the time being like, in my 20s, I was like, I am Jesus. I literally thought I was Jesus. I was like, if there was a second coming, and I joke, but it's actually true, I'd lay in bed, I'm like, I think I actually am the second coming. It's weird, you know? <laughs> and then, 
I reached that point where it's like I had everything. I couldn't think of something that was missing. Again, the road to enlightenment, disillusionment. And I'm like, but I still feel shitty inside. And then I was like, well, maybe I need more validation, more extreme validation. Push my marketing, shock marketing. Oh, more common, shocking market. <laughs> Done, everything crumbled. And that's what actually got me to finally let go and get a glimpse that, oh man, it's not out there, you gotta deal with this. Okay, but you don't have to go through a worldwide media scale. All you have to do is take a moment to reflect back on your life, on all the things that didn't work. Like I would even make a list, all the things you thought would make you happy and it didn't work. Even said before, even this event, if you're not like ecstatic here, and again, it's a process. We all had a glimpse here. We let go of tons of resistance. We dove deep. You now have your homework to go home and practice on. But if you're not ecstatic now, it's like, wow, is this how I thought I'd be feeling sitting here listening to these two motherfuckers up here in front? Yeah. yeah and, and a big key to it is, like, if you look at, say, how Julian went through that, right, you can see how he went through a paradigm, hit the end of a paradigm, and that mm. the healthiest thing that could have happened to him was that crazy meltdown. But that being said, and, and I got a similar experience from it, that being said, that shit was fucking stupid. It shouldn't have to be like that. Like, that's what it took, but it shouldn't have to be like that. So you want to, you don't want to move towards creating that kind of chaos in your life if you can avoid it. Because as much as we could say, oh, that's like some kind of eventful thing and it all happened for a reason, the way things are politically right now, that same bullshit could happen to us again. And then what would we say was the benefit of it? You see my, because it's just getting so crazy out there these days. So you see the main point, right? Is like, you don't need to let this kind of stupid shit happen to you. What does that mean? Have a relationship to the present moment. Let's look at some practical steps, okay? When you're out with your buddies and you're talking about something heavy, can you make little jokes to lighten it up? That's a simple step. Can you make little jokes to lighten it up? I actually view it that if I'm not having fun when I'm doing regular mundane things, I am being robbed. I'm not getting the chance to cash in. Like, I'm sitting here, I'm 39, you know, as of talking right now. When's that future? For you guys that are younger, it's like 39, that's when life is. I promise you, as much as like my life that I built is like right now, if I don't maintain these habits of releasing and of maintaining a healthy relationship with the present moment, my life will be as miserable as it was subjectively and emotionally as when I was 19 or 21 or whatever else, right? What I got from getting older even more so than any material things that I got was the relationship to the present moment. And I could have had that from a younger age. Also, my negative energy growing up caused me to slow down the growth of my business, my, my goals. All of that was slowed down. If I could have learned this kind of stuff at age 19 or 21, now it's debatable whether or not I would even resonate with it or just zone out. So for that reason, you could argue that you do have to go through it. But if you can trigger someone and kind of smear it in their face, the way that we're doing a little bit here, and get you to have that epiphany sooner, because the cool thing with human beings, you can learn from others. You can learn from the experience of other people, okay? Remember Jay-Z, Hove did that. Hopefully you don't have to go through that, right? No, okay, I'm old. So yeah, Hove sold crack. Hopefully you don't have to go through, okay? Old like blue pronoun. So it's like, you shouldn't have to go through that. You can learn from the experiences of other people and then quickly move forward, right? So at our level now, we're not looking to have to go through a nightmare to keep learning lessons. We want to learn quickly. And a big factor of that is again, like I said, viewing it that you're harvesting money. You're get, it's like, view it like you're getting paid every time that you smile. View it like you're getting paid every time that you crack a joke. View it like you're getting paid every time that you're silly. View it like you're getting paid every time that you're present to the moment and just feeling the fucking glory of life. View it like you're getting paid when you stop to look at the tree, to look at the sky. Marketers will make you believe that you need to get some, you know, some perfect little this or that or the other thing in order to have a benefit, right? They make a movie and then they hold the keys to your happiness. That's fine, I love products, I love marketing. That's all awesome stuff. Someday we wanna make YouTube channels on how to make a product or how to market, I love it all. That being said, you also have to be aware how this is affecting you. Study books like Gaber Mate in the realm of Hungry Ghosts. Take, get his perspective on how most people that are in the streets shooting up heroin, on the streets, like just killing themselves, just doing meth. Go look up meth case 
heroin case. Look, we're here in downtown LA. You don't got to go far, man. Seriously, go to go to one of the little tent cities. Go talk to these people. See what's happening to them. I don't want to judge or make a conclusion because I'm not them. I'm just giving you, a, you know, one man, you know, sh one man sharing another uh, his opinion. So my personal view, and having read the Gabriel Mate book, where he's worked with these people for many years, he talks about the trauma and then just shooting up. Medic you know, medication, aka heroin or whatever, to try to stop that trauma. You know what's so messed up too if you get stuck on hard drugs? Even if you get off it, it's like this huge part of just your willpower day to day is just staying clean. Like for you guys, you're like, okay, I went to the gym today, good for me. I worked on my career today, good for me. For somebody who had a hard drug addiction in the past, for many of them, it's like I another day sober. That's their version of a successful day. For They probably had to exert more willpower to just live a very unproductive day without shooting up than you did to go do all this other stuff. That's really crazy. That's what's so dangerous with drugs, right? Opioids that are taking over. Look at our country, opioid epidemic. Even painkillers. Most regular people, painkiller, two painkillers a day. Just daily. So wake up, it's like, oh, painkiller time, another one, and they just pop it like fucking M&Ms. That's like the default. It's weird if it's like you don't take fucking painkillers. No? Crazy. And that's the other thing. It's like, even if, let's just say hypothetically, you manage to use all these techniques to fight against self-sabotage and get that seemingly successful look in life, and say you just power through and you're like, man, I'm just going to do it and you get it. You're not going to enjoy it. You're going to feel miserable inside. And that external failure will still find you. If it's not in your money success, it's in your health. We see it all the time. You know, even people we know, friends of ours, it's like they achieve a certain amount of success and it gets them so on their health. Watch. So hard to watch. Yeah. Hardest thing you'll ever watch. You'll see it. Even like hustlers. It's like how many hustlers do you see? It's like, man, I burnt out. I had a fucking ulcer and shit. That's like the go-to of the hustler. If you do hashtag hustle or hustler on Instagram, it's like the most miserable looking people you'll see. Is that what you want? It's like low sleep, this. They're fucked. You know, new tropics to balance it out. It gets them, you know. That energy will find you. It'll get you. You can try to run away from it. You can try to escape it. The only way out, as we talked about today, is through. You got to face it. You got to let go of it. You know, doing this type of work isn't something that's fun. It's like, oh, it's this fun, cool, cool you know, spirituality, self-help, really fun. It's a requirement. Like, you are fucked if you don't do this. It will get you. I mean, unless you got that serotonin button pressed down genetically in your brain. Some people win the serotonin lottery, man. And if you're a serotonin dopamine lottery winner, <laughs> props to you, bro. But if that's not you, you are screwed. You will not just ruin opportunities, relationships, money. Just stay stuck nonstop. It'll get you physically, mentally, emotionally. It will ruin you. The default of most people isn't success. It's not stagnating. It's failing. The default for most people is being a loser. That's the default. A floating turd. It's being a floating fucking turd. So the kind of work that we do here today at Transformation Mastery, it's meant to really tap you in and show you how to let that go so that you can cultivate a relationship with the present moment. You can bring about positive energy into your mind. Your potential is so much more than you realize right now. When you do this work for an extended period of time, you see people and you see them being held down in their potential and you feel so sad. For us, the first kind of taste that we got was learning social skills, learning dating advice type content. And we'd be out and you kind of just slip into state and you're like, this is weird, I'm funny. My voice is projecting. People are attracted to me even though they're a lot more physically attractive than I am. Everybody wants my attention. I don't feel sad anymore. I don't feel traumatized anymore. And you kind of spike up, you get a taste for it, what your potential is. I'd have that in public speaking. I'd go in front of a crowd, it would just flow out. It was weird, I'd ride the wave, this is weird. And as I was doing it, I'm like, something weird's happening to me. What is this? What is this that I'm seeing right now? And as I saw that, I began, you know, at first I would just use it to try to like, you know, socialize better. And that's fun, I love that. And I love showing that to people. We love it so much. That being said, we also saw other applications of it. Then we started to think, well, why can you slip into that maybe when you go out? Why can't we be like that a little more often? Maybe not all the time, I'm not, he's not. But why not more often? Why can't you default to that? And then if you had a bad day, that was just a bad day instead of bad being the default or average. And that's where we began to realize, wait a minute, there's a lot of trauma energy holding you down. 
and it's just bleeding into you all the time. Like the sound of this, the little hum, but you don't notice it unless you clue in. Listen to how loud this silly little projector is. It's kind of fucking weird, isn't it? Can I turn it off? Like it's freaking me out. So it's like, <laughs> right? That's trauma release. Oh. It's gone, <laughs> okay? It's gone. So that's what we wanna be doing. We have to be letting go, we have to ch take chunks out, let it go and snap into alertness. And again, if you're, if you're riding off the right fuel, ideally, you wanna be feeding off of work. You wanna be gaining energy from work because it gets you out of your head. It gets you more into real life. And then of course, you do need a break and to do proactive recovery because you've kind of fired up your immune system. Don't get me wrong. But in general, you wanna be feeding off it. I don't wanna be up here like, oh, this sucks and I gotta fucking do my fucking sucky talk and do oh, these fucker, you know, right? That's horrible. Oh my God, you would never succeed at a high level doing that, in my view. Or some people do, but what outcome do you really get? So just that awareness alone and moving on that track is the difference between looking at you in 10 years and seeing you with the big bright eyes, energy flowing through you, creativity, intuition, energy, health, wealth, alignment, versus seeing you in 10 years, a fucking train wreck like the majority of people you meet the floating turds. When we say like, start cultivating a healthier relationship with the present moment, accept who you are, let go of all that resistance to you right here, right now, that does not mean stagnate and do nothing. By default, things change. Nothing is permanent. You don't have to make them change, they will change. So you do have a certain intention in terms of where you're going. But one of my favorite sayings in terms of, you know, self-acceptance and growth, is from a book called The Presence Process, which I highly recommend reading. And what he says is, it's a state of continued ripening. That's like the best way of putting it. A state of continued ripening. You're here, you're feeling fucking amazing in this moment. There's no rush or need to be anywhere else. And you're like, how could it possibly get better than this? And every second you're surprised how you just get riper and it just gets better and better and better and better. And it feels effortless and you just get fueled. And once more, it's like, how are you gonna live your life so that when you die, because you will die, you will look back and be like, damn, I milked this experience that is being alive. I took it in, every fucking bit of it. I took it in. And remind yourself of this, like you will die, take it in. Even what it feels like to be alive. You know, I always joke like, why do people like going to swimming pools, really? You ever think about that? Like, why do you like going to a fucking pool? It's just water, you know? The only reason is we're not used to it. Here we're like, air. So you're underwater, you're like, whoa, slow motion. Like that's the only reason you like going to a pool. People will pay and spend hours hanging on in this liquid, like just hanging out in there. Cause you're not used to it. You're used to being alive. You're used to breathing. Imagine this is the fucking pool. Like, whoa, air, <sighs> aliveness, milk it. And start now, don't wait. Remember, you've passed the finish line. You have the tools, start now. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah! yeah. Oh. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest happiness I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level, okay? Be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.